Welcome back to Soccer Cards United. It's time for episode 135 of the best little soccer podcast in the world. My name is Jason. That's Enzo over there. Hi, Enzo. Hello, Jason. Uh, how's things? Things are great. Um, now, you did have a trip last week, but we're going to tell us about it later in the show. Is that right? I'm in better health. Thanks for asking. That's the most important thing. And I did go on a trip. That's the most important thing. You're right. Your health is your wealth, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, well, can't that's flip good. your health. You can't flip your health. No. Mm-hmm. Uh, unless you like sell a kidney or something, that's true. There's ways to do it. There are there are ways. To, see, if you're a hustler like me, there's always ways Ooh. to be making money, make doing deals. Do you ever you know? take time to relax yourself? Jason? I can't. I just can't. I'm just like, you know. Time is money. A time is money. Time is hustle. How many I'm kidneys do you have? Not not enough. <laughs> um. Oi. So, uh, yeah, big week ahead of us. Um, but we can talk about that in just one second as we go into Hobby HQ. Oh, we're back, by the way. Sorry, we weren't here Thursday. I was on holidays briefly. You I tell d- me if you think this would, would have been a good idea. Ta- okay. So you were away on... Yeah. And you said to me, we can record before you go off. If, if yeah, I absolutely. I said, I'm, I'm actually... I know the people want one on Thursday of work yeah. to listen to the podcast. I said, I'll do it. And you said, no. I said, no. And then I was here and I was like, maybe I should put something out myself. And you were twiddling around on Thursday thinking, what do I do? Do I, put, do I record something? And I was going to do, here's what I was going to do. Exciting. There's no more point telling you what I was going to do because I didn't yeah. do it. Uh, if everyone listening, this is what Jason thought about doing and didn't do. Yeah. I was going to take like, say, five or ten of the top transfers from the January transfer window that are relevant to the hobby. Mm. Go through them, talk about the players. Would have been great. Could have been good. But then I didn't. What did you do on set on Thursday? I don't know. Great. <laughs> Mostly just sat here thinking about whether or not I should do that. <laughs> <laughs> the time it took me to decide whether yeah, or not I should, should do it, I could have had it done. Right. Um, well, we'll get there. It, uh, that's a good sign. That's like a player that's coachable. Yeah. <laughs> you know? He's in the system. He, can't, yeah. he can do it. We just need to. Like yeah. Jaden Sancho, you're kind of to the side for the minute, but you're yeah. going to come back in. Do you know what actually put me off in the end? What? And this is not this is not a word of a lie. Oh, God. Completely honestly. Atletico Madrid. No. The fact that Chelsea had bought so many players, mm. I was like, I cannot. And a just, lot of hobby. Yeah, oh, they, they just. You didn't want Chelsea. Like, if it was a top ten list, you didn't want seven of them being Chelsea players. And I couldn't work out whether I just should treat Chelsea as like one mm. thing, or because I can't just keep going like. Um, a and went he to went Chelsea. to Chelsea, and he went to Chelsea. So, the, my inability to come to terms with the the Chelsea question, the Chelsea transfers, I just could. I just. I was like, uh, seized up, you know, I was overwhelmed. It's understandable. Um, so I just wanted to say if you uh, blame Todd Bowley to the listener. There you go. Um, and me for going on a holiday. I would never blame you for that. You work very hard, you deserve a holiday. It was great. Very good. But don't tell us yet because ah! there's, there's a item on the docket. Um, now, big news, the continuing rollout of uh, Panini Select, the return of Panini Select. Uh, Serie A is getting the select treatment now. Oh, well. we love that, Jason. We've already had FIFA, which we love. La Liga, which we love, and now Serie A. Pause, Jason. Yeah. Last year we had FIFA score. Yeah. Uh-huh. La Liga score. Yeah. Serie A score. We didn't have that. Do we have the Liga score? I don't think so. Did we not? La Liga score. No, probably not. Did we not? I guess they had mosaic. Do we have Serie A score? We had Serie A score. Does La Liga have one of those Donruss elites? La Liga does now, I think, but I don't know if... You know if they had score. Well, I'm just saying, it doesn't even matter. <laughs> I'll look it up while you're talking. My point is falling apart. I was just... And the Premier League score, of course. Yeah. Now we have FIFA select. Serie A select. No, there's no... There's no, uh, no, La, Liga no La Liga score. score. No. But do you think we're either going to get a Premier League sco- select? Which, by all accounts, could be very successful. Mm-hmm. Compared to Premier League Prism. Yeah. Select looks better than Prism people. Or Mosaic. Apparently Mosaic. That came out already last year. No, but it didn't come out this year. I'm saying Select oh, yeah. could replace that. But what I'm trying to say is, this kind of adds to the excitement of <laughs> League on getting a score. Yes. Yeah, because now it's in play. It's in play. Yeah. It's going to happen. Whether it happens this year or next year, we don't know, but it's going to happen. Sorry, Jason. My 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 point was not so no, it was, I cohesive. It was I thought it was good. Somebody commented on our last podcast and said, uh, talking about uh, League on score and all that, and said uh, it was inevitable that the French League was going to get a premium set. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. like, 
No, it wasn't inevitable, actually. Because for many years we've been talking about it happening and it wasn't happening. Yeah, there was three years of absolute wilderness while the hobby was booming and France was booming. And, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think waiting around for something to happen and then when it happened saying, sure, it was always going to happen. <laughs> you know. You just wanted it to be more of a celebratory moment. Yeah, I mean, it's just like, we're here week in, week out. Waiting. Waiting. Asking. Predicting. I'm demanding. saying it's easy, to, it's easy to sit back until something happens and then say, sure, that was always going to happen. Mm. Fair. So That's no way to be. That's not just, yeah. That's not a man that was waiting for it. Exactly, yeah. you just seen it and goes, ah, that's grand. Yeah. Makes sense. That was always going to happen. We wanted it three years ago. We've been talking about it for ages and ages and ages. Um, looking at some of the art here for uh, Score. Uh, Is that popping up on the screen for the people, Jason? No. No. I didn't think so. Um, I didn't think so. And that's not score, it's select. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> that's select, Jason. Get yourself together. That's select, sorry. Um, we have, of course, you got your base, uh, you got your terrace, you got your mezzanine, you got your field level. Oof. Um, and field level gets a lot of love for horizontal cards. It's probably the most loved horizontal card yeah. in the hobby. Um, anyway, one of the very f uh, exciting things is that uh, Cavaradonna. Oh, yeah. is going to get rookie cards in this year's Serie A products. We haven't seen them in tops products for the Champions League. Yeah, Napoli um, causing some havoc. But uh, it's it's covered under the Serie A license, so that'd be very exciting. Now, I know those of you who have the uh, Ruben Kazan Russian sticker, I think it's Ruben Kazan, um, will probably be saying, that's not the rookie, da, da, da. But, you know, it's select. select. Here. It's a select or C. Yeah. Um, no, I, to, to I've hard. seen in other selects, yeah. The rookie logo going down here mm. on previous year's design. Not in the top corner, but rather at over, the nameplate. Yeah, over there, the Serie A logo on the left of the base card is in that position. Yeah. So maybe it depends on whether it's mezzanine or terrace or... Yeah, I don't know. Who Select knows? is so beautiful. And we're going to get to know Select very well this year. Mm. FIFA, La Liga, Serie A. Who knows what Who else? knows what else? I've heard rumours, Jason. Okay. That Panini Chronicles is scrapped this year. Right. In favour of the Selects. However... That sounds ridiculous, I think, because Chronicles are so different. Yeah. I have a feeling that rumor that I've heard mm -hmm. was lost in translation, and what the person originally was trying to explain to someone else yeah. was that Select is no longer in Chronicles this year, which makes sense. Because mm. Select was an insert in Chronicles last year, so we still had some Select soccer. It was just in Chronicles as opposed to its own standalone set. With the standalone sets, you'd assume, assume Select won't be in Chronicles. Now... There is still national treasures and stuff that pop up in Chronicles or Prisms that, you know, so you yeah, never know. Yeah. But I don't know. I hope Chronicles has not been disbanded. And if it has been, quote, unquote, disbanded, I hope it's just the league licenses use disbanded versus the, the, the product itself, the brand. Here's another one. Speaking of Chronicles. Yeah. And that's, that's I think, I, and I, I swear to God, I'm not, trying to, I'm not trying to bully this guy that made this YouTube comment. I appreciate anyone that comments on the... Aye, aye, aye. Right? I'm really not. And we I, don't get that many comments. I know we don't get that many comments. And, and I'm really, you're attacking someone that has taken the time to comment. I'm not trying to attack anyone. And I I understand that it was done in the best of intentions. But also, I think in that same comment, they said uh, Chronicles could be like... Something like they said, well, maybe League On could be combined with the Portuguese League or something. I'm like, now you're repeating things that we've said on this podcast. Three years deep saying that. You've come on. Mm. You said, well, the league only thing is inevitable. Uh, do you know what they should do? Is this what it, we, we do that. You can't just walk in and start shouting the odds. That's soccer as United all day. We've been here. Portuguese, Dutch league, French league, Belgian league. We, we've been there. Yeah. We've talked about this. I know. We've talked about so, this, I mean, people. this comment, I'm like, what? where have you been? Who do you think you're commenting on? Where are the guys? We said that. Now, maybe, again, benefit of the doubt, maybe he's reminding us. Or... Of the idea. Maybe our influence is so big that the people that listen then go to card shows and go to places yeah. and then they start regurgitating what we say, which is a lot of people do that when they listen to podcasts. Yeah. I hear a lot from the United stand. A lot of United fans I know just keep giving... Their opinion is just your man's opinion. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just... You, and I think that people probably have said that. Yeah. And maybe he heard it, not from us, and then came back to us and said, there is an idea. I think people say things without... For me, if you're quoting something you heard in a podcast... Mm. You should say... Like you said. I heard on a podcast. Mm. I mean, if you're in person. Yeah, yeah, true. No, people don't do that. No, they don't do no, that. No, they no, just no, no, say no. it as if it's their own idea. Like, they act like they've read a book. And now what they've learned in the book is their knowledge, personal knowledge. Yeah, but it's not. They've and heard on someone's podcast going, did you ever read this book? <laughs> didn't even read the book? Didn't even read the book. You know, they don't do that. People don't go, actually, on a podcast, these lads' podcasts, they agree, and they've suggested this, and it's a great idea. No one ever says that. No. They go, do you know, it'll be a great idea. 
Yeah. I don't know what that is, but it's a phenomenon, Jason. It is a phenomenon. Um, oh, stained glass insert. I love a stained glass insert. Oh, yeah. Um, Joshua Xerxes there for Bologna. He had a, he had a, he had a minute. He had a minute. He had a minute. I don't uh, like to look at those inserts. Uh, the, the future... I don't even know if it says future stars, future something. And the, the other one, the, 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 the two on the right. Just select like. future. Yeah, no, I'm not a big fan. I like the patch. Yes, select swatches. For Mirabilia test and select. Select swatches, jumbo swatches, select Mirabilia and dual swatches. Swatch? Swatches. Um, five cards per pack, 12 packs per box, 12 boxes per case. That's a classic select configuration. Uh, three autographs and or mobility cards per hobby box on average including signers including Paolo Dybala Kaká mm. and Charles de Ketelier that's a weird three if I'm like I want to like Jason can we actually come back to that when the checklist comes out yeah because I feel like the person who created like I don't think they're the three best autos in select 100% not but I think the person who wrote that down felt like they might be mm. do you know what I mean yeah the Panini person said here's the selling point mm. And so, like, that's not... Who are you? They're great. Yeah. Like, they're fine. But if that's the peak... Like, that tells me there's no Cristiano Ronaldo's in there. I'm assuming. Unless they just don't want to give the game away too early. True. But that's a weird one. Hmm. Because the La Liga one mentioned Gavi. Which was cool. Yeah. I don't know. And Messi, I think. I think. Not sure. I... No. No, it didn't. It was Ronaldo, wasn't it? Was yeah. It? Um, da, 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 got your classic stained glass artistic impressions visionary and team badges limited inserts do we know what artistic inserts. impression and visionary look like or no I don't I don't but I could maybe have a look maybe they're from other sports they must be uh, Panini Select because they're all case hits aren't they yeah and team badges that's actually really really Jason yeah side note okay oh look at this we um in in, in in this is football footballing news that maybe wouldn't make your football week, but it's been part of my football week for some time now. Yeah. Little in the Italian second division, Frosinone Calcio. Yes. Are top of the league. We, we, they, they're killing it. Yes. Next year, Jason. If we get promoted. Yes. And by the way, this is hometown team. Me and Jason love them, have supported yeah. them for Oh, years. I see what you're saying. Next year. Yeah. If there's team badges in select. Then. We could do a like, rainbow. Then, yeah. Yeah, but imagine like like I hope it's not like for, Formula One where it's like team badges are in one year and the next year they're not in it. If a series like Frozen like catch us in Frozen only breaks all day every day, all day every day. Do you know the problem with this is what people are gonna artificially inflate the price of Frozen only spots in breaks? No, they will. We'll just buy off Americans that don't listen to the podcast. Ah, big time breakers, backyard breaks, pulling us all the good stuff. Very good. We'll just be on what now? We'll, we'll be subdued about it. Okay, but Jason. Like, I think my collector experience is going to change if Frozenone are in products because they're that classic, super cheap. They're going to be super cheap. Yeah. And they're in all the premium stuff. It's great to collect a premium set minnow. Yeah, absolutely. That's the that's the sweet spot. Premium set minnow. If you're buying if you're buying into Premier League breaks with a, a Bournemouth play, a Bournemouth spot, you're having a good time. You're having a great time. True. This is the uh, this is from Euro Twenty Select. This is the visionary insert. That looks good. Pretty cool. Okay, okay. You can um, expect nice things. You'd forget that that was a select set, wouldn't you? Yeah. This is from Panini Baseball Select Artistic Impressions. Beautiful. And then Team Badges is this. Oh, yeah, I know that. Actual Team Badges. Imagine that with Frozen Only, though. How would you feel? I'd feel great about it. I'd that. actually lose my, my... I'd just go you, crazy. Yeah. Like, imagine the select brand and a 1 of 1 and a 1 of 50 and all this with, with the Frozen Only badge. Do, 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 do. People don't understand. Soccer Cards United is yellow and blue. As a testament to yep. Frosinone. It runs it's in the It runs deep. It's in the DNA. Look at look at the colour of the microphone cables. This is Frosinone themed. People. Always has been. Always has been. Yeah. People don't get it. They don't get it. Our excitement is built because it's starting like I think it's eight 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 points clear, is it? Maybe. Maybe more. Let me double check. We won again, it was brilliant. Can't stop winning. Be Como. Destroy them. Oh sorry. It's just 11 points clear. And Jason, not just that. That's 11 points clear of Genoa. Yeah. Who are a very famous, more Italian club. You Certainly, know? yeah. 11 points clear. But that's Genoa are still in an automatic place. We are 12 points clear of Reggiana. So we're 12 points clear. Unbelievable. Now, there's a long, long way to go. It's a long season. Anything can happen. 
but we're killing it. Serie B is an Fabio Grosso, league. the manager, former winner of the World Cup. Yeah. Italy that scored the crucial penalty to win, scored the iconic goal against Germany in the semis. Uh, won a mischievous penalty against Australia. We won't get into that. Them being in Serie A select next year makes me, like, have goosebumps. Mm. God forbid exciting. if we have some rookies that have potential. I hope we don't, actually, I suppose. Yeah, you don't want that. We don't want that. You want a bunch of veterans. Bunch of vets. Um, although a lot of vet- veterans are gone. It's a kind of a, it's new, a new... It's, it's a, a whole yeah, new it's look a young, team. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's a few names. Because like, obviously this year's been amazing, but the years prior to this... Yeah. ...really are close to our hearts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're hoping... Like know. for some legends? Do you think they put in like a little frozen you know, like Ch- Ch- Chano or Dionisi? I don't think so. You don't think the people in Panini are quite... I don't think they're looking into it, no. No. Ah! Tragic. Um, it is tragic. Now, let's go to a... Uh, let's go check uh, our balls uh, over at Golden. Check our balls? Huh? When I was away, I almost sent you a photo. Yeah. I was chatting with my friend. I said, I just need to go to the hotel room and send Jace the photo with his balls. <laughs> Now, you understand the context of that. I do understand the context of that. Just give me a second. I need to send Jason a photo of my balls. <laughs> and I'll get right back to you. That was great. Um, and that's something that Ken Golden could understand because his mm. historic Diego Maradona Hand of God and Goal of the Century soccer ball photo match from 1986 World Cup quarter final. Grainy photo matched. Gra- grainy photo matched. Um, is got two days left on the auction. And with buyers premium included, we're at 1.68 million US dollars. Wee, Diego Maradona is hot shit. Yes, very exciting. So that's gonna that's gonna be a big, big number. It's, it already is a big, big number. 17 bids it has. Mmm. Mmm. But you wouldn't mind that in a nice little glass case. You certainly would not. Show bid history. Oh, they're bidding up. They're, they're bidding crazy. it up. Easy. Yeah. It's great, great, great to see a soccer memorabilia piece is number one in the elite golden auction that's great it's fantastic then we find soccer again in lot 15 where we have the one-on-one black prism leo messi a listener of the show owns this it is right now at eighty-two thousand us dollars and that's without buyer's that's premium that's without a buyer's premium so buyer's premium probably puts that at 94 96 is it 98 ah my maths abandoned me Ninety-eight thousand. we're pushing six figures for a card that could have been hit in a four hundred dollar box, a World Cup Prism, twenty twenty two. Very exciting. Um, it's an Argentina fest. Hitting a break, by the way, I do recall. Hitting a break. If there was ever an advertisement for breaks, that could be it. That could be it. Um, what's the we, gold prism? We wanted to check. Do the we gold know what prism. breaker uh, pulled it? Not off the top of my head. I could find it. That's 20, okay. No. Twenty thousand without buyer's premium. Yeah. So that's twenty four thousand with buyer's premium. Am I it correct? is indeed. Your your you're back. back on. You're back. back. You're back on solid ground. That's not bad for a gold prism base. No, not base, but you know what I mean. Normal, non-auto. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gold prism, twenty-four thousand. No, it's exciting. That's big. Um, PSA ten, of course. Of course, gem in top one. <sighs> that could do a big number. None, none higher. Top one, none higher. Um, yeah. So that's in two. So by the time we're on do you want doing, what are you for sale? Is it? Uh, 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 let me just. Uh, I think so. It'll be down a bit. It's right? down, it's down, there. down, down. That's just an instant like hit from Prism. Down, really like down, to see. down, down, down. Let me just search Argentina. Can I do that? Should be able to search Argentina. Might get a load of Messi's. You might get a load of. Here we go. Is it there? Yeah. Uh, in a PSA eight, the one one two thousand four hundred. Hooey. That's a nice little piece. I hope that goes to Argentina. Yeah. No, I don't believe that it will be. Why don't you buy it, Jason? Why don't I buy it? I'm not from Argentina. Yeah, but they won the World Cup. It's at the one-on-one black prism. Think like, I think that was a frozen only badge. Could I buy it and repatriate it to Argentina? You could do. I could fly in. Imagine me at the airport, Buenos Aires. Thousands to meet me on the tarmac. I'm <laughs> delivering the the one-on-one. Yes. They're going crazy. They're going crazy. I mean, if they were going crazy over just the uh, stickers, just to get a Leo Messi sticker. Imagine what they would have experienced if the new prism was a thing. Oh, my God. Because they didn't know about that. Their society would have collapsed. Absolutely collapsed. Um, they did not know about prism. No way. They didn't know about it. Mm-mm. They couldn't have known about it. I love that Argentina won the World Cup. It's just great, isn't it? It was like, that's what was supposed to happen. Yeah. And it did. And it's just like, ooh. It felt right. It felt right. And it was right. It was right. It was absolutely right. Um, okay, Enzo, on the on the docket here, 
I have an item that was only revealed to me as Enzo Lisbon. I went to Lisbon, people. I got some nice pastel donatas. Yeah, delicious. Oh, best in the biz. Best in the biz. Yeah. Best in the biz. Some super buck. Yeah. Some vino verde. Yeah. Super buck. A- super buck. Uh, a sponsor, a Porto and Benfica. and sporting or ben- and Benfica. So it's always made me uncomfortable. That super buck have such a stranglehold on the they, they Portuguese. Have, they have such a stranglehold on Portugal because yeah. most pubs you go into, there's like two taps, two taps, and it's super buck on it. Super buck, yeah, <laughs> super buck light or something. Yeah, there's nothing else. Um, it's crazy. It's crazy. I went there. I did some 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 shopping, some hobby esque shopping. I will say mm. while I was there, that will be revealed in a week or two. Yeah, right. Because I'm not there yet. But I picked up a gift. No. It's a gift that I'm actually going to call. It's a gift and it's an Easter egg. Now, the Easter egg is its own. People know what Easter eggs are. It's an Easter egg meaning... Not like it's chocolate. It's a secretive thing. Right. But is it an Easter egg for me or for the listeners? Could be. For anyone. You're not, you're not here to reveal it if you... You know. So I shouldn't go... When I get to no, the... No, I shouldn't no. go like... Oh, this is because... No. You should. Right? Yeah. Are you ready? Now. I'm ready. If it's not a rubber duck, I'm going to be extremely angry. I picture you as a man... Yeah. That struggles to find a bathtub that is suited to your height, but that you're a man that likes baths. That's actually the exact correct assessment. Well. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. I, think, I don't know if I should take it out or I should give it to you. Yeah, I'll, I'll do it. I'm taking it okay. out. Okay. Right? I don't know if you know what this is. These are specialized rubber duckies. <laughs> right? Now that one, do you know where that's from? Do you know what that is? Um, it looks like the Death Star. It's Star Wars related, yeah. for sure. Now, there was some, some licensing issues, so I think the rubber duck shop would like like me to clarify that. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely not. Now, when you bought this, when you bought this, there was no implication of... I had to assume it was Star Wars. Yes, they did not. This one needed less of an assumption. I think, I think if, I, if we were going to court, if I was the... The, the lawyer. The plaintiff. Yeah. The plaintiff and the lawyer. This one, I think, would be an easier case. Oh, my God. Now, that, this is... This is this is an uh, Iron Man. Uh, no, it's not. It's not. not okay, the, the, the Disney Corporation would like me to make clear. Disney Duck Store would like to know. These are official rubber ducky. I'm just gonna put the bag there. Yeah, I'm just giving the listeners a little hit of the. Uh, this is the Iron Man. Now you'll be upset to know. This is the, the Star Wars. Brilliant, <laughs> brilliant stuff. No, listen, the studio needs a bit of doing up. Yeah. If you, I assume you don't have a bat big enough to put these in use, so maybe they... But I'll, I'll let you know one thing, though. Yeah. There was a Batman one. Oh. No, I know, and I know you love Batman. I love Batman. I know, I know. <laughs> but I thought it wasn't like... If you look at the Death Star rubber duck, yeah. it looks like a duck. Yeah. Right? And then if you look at the, the Iron Man, it looks like just kind of fierce. It doesn't look like a yeah. fun rubber ducky. Yeah. The Batman was in that kind of... It was effect. like a... It wasn't a light piece. It was a heavy Yeah, piece. I needed a one light, and I, I just kind of preferred... I know, I know you love... I, I should have got Batman instead of the... the <laughs> The Iron Man, and I know that, but I kind of have enough. <laughs> I know that. You have enough Batman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I, I think these are fantastic. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. And can these go in the studio on the little display? I think they can. Yeah, I think so too. I assume you don't have a bat that you could. I don't in. have a bat, no. But I could picture you with Robert Ducky. That's also why I want to give you a Batman. You get to what you said of it. <laughs> you think if you got me a Batman Robert Ducky, I would start to kind of renovate my house. People would be like, Jason, are you done yet? And you'd be like, <laughs> with the Death Star coming in. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> That's great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. That's I. It's a what a what an assessment of my personality. <laughs> <laughs> there are listeners at home going. Oh, that kind of actually does make sense. <laughs> that kind of is his vibe. Check so. Yeah, big guy who can't really take a bath because they're all small. But if he ever gets a bath, <laughs> he'd love it. Loves it. He needs it. That's great. Look at that. There you go. Thank you very much, Enzo. You're very welcome. Oh, I'm delighted, and I'm not even big marabilia guy. <laughs> and I loved it. Okay, this is great. I okay. I can't look at them anymore. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of trips, yes, we're back on the road this week with Soccer Cars United. I just came back from the airport, Jason. Don't make me do it again. I have to. I okay. have to bring you back to that airport because we're heading to London this weekend for mm. yet another edition of the London Card Show. Our first card show of 2023. Yes, which is exciting. Very exciting, and um, we went to a number of card shows in 2022. And we've been off. Oh, we've been off the road now for a couple of months. A few months, yeah. It's been nice. And can I say? Yeah. I was thinking about this today, and I've enjoyed not having to travel, you know, so often. 
But I was thinking today about the London Card Show coming up on Saturday, and uh, which is in a, a, a new part of the venue, mm, bigger, bigger hall, room, blah blah blah. Very yeah, exciting. Yeah. We're doing our Q and A, doing a Q and A with Tops UK and potentially Tops US at the same time. Yeah. So a panel. The lads on a panel. We're hosting a panel. Yeah. We're hosting a panel. So that's exciting. Um, we're doing all sorts of stuff. So that's that's that, that's good. Um, but I was thinking, you know, it's great not to be traveling all the time, but I do. When I was going to card shows all the time, I felt much more involved with the hobby. Oh, absolutely. And actually doing, being at card shows and being engaged with, with the hobby that way hmm. has made the online hobby in terms of like looking at eBay and stuff a much less satisfying experience for okay, me. Okay, interesting. So I found that like, now I'm like, oh, I can't wait to go to this card show and just see what like... What's there. See what's there, see what people are saying, what's going on. Because I in the second half of last year, kind of came to rely on card shows. card shows as a way to take the temperature of things and see what people are liking and all that stuff in a way that before I was familiar with card shows, before I was going to them regularly, I was very happy in just the online experience. Of course. But then once the card show was introduced as an idea, it's like now I, I only the real thing will do, you know? Yeah, that makes sense. So I I'm excited it. to go to London is what I'm saying. Yeah, no, that's, that's, I, I've been picking up a few pieces to then bring to the card show, yeah. so I'm excited to like, we have like a new kind of plot of stock, I guess, that yeah. we're going to get to bring to card shows, which is fun. I'm excited. Do you know one thing we never did? What? We never got a new bag for the roller banner. <laughs> I'm actually snapping about this. So for those of you who have been seen us at card shows or seen, or seen the vlogs on YouTube, you'll know that we have a, a roller banner behind our table that says Soccer Cards United, and that comes in a carrier bag. Now, that's fine. We were walking around with a carrier bag. You put it on your shoulder. It's no problem. But at some point last year, the strap broke <laughs> broke on the on the carrier bag for the roller banner. Disaster. And so now you have to... You have to carry it under the arm. You have arm. to carry it on your arm. Or over your shoulder <laughs> like a log. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to either carry it like a newspaper or a ladder. And um, it's very inconvenient. Yeah, terrible. And sometimes it like fall, you have to it swings around <laughs> and everything. So... Joe, I discovered on, on the airport on the way... You could just walk into an airport if you have like a suitcase and a backpack. Yeah. With like a little bag. Yeah. Like a shopping bag. No one stops you. No. Because the thing is, you'll get through, and like obviously you don't have anything crazy inside the shopping bag, but you can get through security. As long as you don't have any of the prohibited items. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. like you get through the security. And at that point, you could have just picked your stuff up in duty free. So the plane people don't stop you. They don't care. Yeah. They're not like you have two carry on bags. You can't do that. As long as there's no liquids. They don't care. They don't care. But that was mad for me. Like, I brought, I just had a bag and I was like, I, 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 it was actually so funny. I'd been on so many airports with all these card shows. I did the full thing. I was like, I go through security. Da, 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 da. And I was like, oh, I could have got that bag at any point between security and getting on the plane. Yeah. They're not going to stop me. Because the first time we went to bring the roller banner on, on the plane, we tried to check it in. Yeah. And the woman had said to us, you don't have to check that in. And we were like, no, no you don't understand. But even a roller banner, like, if we're bringing wax to the show, I can have an extra little bag with wax in it. Yeah. And carry it, no problem. And you're allowed to do that, and no one will stop you. No one will stop us. That's a little top tip. Top, top tip. Top travel tip. So, uh, and I never found out if they sell roller banner bags bags separate to roller banners. They definitely do. Do you think they do? We don't have enough time now to do it. Well, I mean, could I walk into a shop and get one? Where is there a roller banner shop? I don't know. A printer might have one. If I went into a printer's. I'd have to give you the roller banner. Because you'd get the wrong size or something. Yeah. Unless we have, do we have the dimensions of on an invoice or something? I mean, I have the physical roller banner in my house. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd like to see you carry in the roller banner. I know you would like to see that. It brings you great joy. I, sometimes we're walking along and Enzo goes to me, "Hey, you got on with that roller banner?" <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, um, and it's kind of an ongoing battle between us as to at any given time if Where's you if you ha if you end up having to take the roller banner, it's like, oh my god. <laughs> well, oh yeah, I'm going to have bags. Well, I guess we're both going to have... It's going to be very similar. We're all going to have bags. We all have bags. We all have bags. We'll work something out. You're carrying the banner. You're the big guy. But I'm going to see... I'm, the, the, I'm like the uh, the pack horse. I'm the... <laughs> <laughs> I've got saddle bags. <laughs> we're just tying it to you. Yeah. I'll just throw that on Jason. He's grand. He's grand. We give him an apple if he gets tired. You're actually really dangerous with the roller banner because you're so high up. Yeah. Can, when you're turning, you could it's a head level. Head. Yeah. So, oh. if anyone has a lead on that, we'd appreciate it. Um, looking forward to London this weekend. 
Okay, before we came on the podcast today, um, we recorded a video opening Futera World Unique, um, which we talked about on the on the show. Um, we said, we've got to get, I believe Jake the Mailman sent in a an impassioned uh, positive review about, about it and Unique. what makes it good. And so we said, we have to... We have to get involved. Have to get involved. We got involved, opened a box. The results of that will be on YouTube and um, before this podcast. So go over and see it if you haven't seen it. Um, but these came out at about 300 euro, euros, I believe. 350 maybe. I and think so. They are now at about 600 dollars okay. or 600 euros. Um, yeah. Look at that, 2nd of February, $630 on oh. eBay. So quite an interesting collector's piece. Breakers love them. Yeah, they're fun. Um, they come as like, I mean, you could definitely end up doing like individuals. Yeah. Do you know? Um, and there was all sorts of, we got a one-on-one, we got mad stuff. So have a look at that. Look at that, single pack, 200. Incredible. 2468, that's a smart way to do it. Yeah. Um. Never. So go over and have a look on YouTube for our review and uh, box opening of Futera. Um, now, we had your football week and stuff all planned out, but I want to break in because as we were planning planning the show, news came out. Breaking news. Breaking news about Manchester City. So mm. here's a headline. Manchester City allegedly breached Premier League financial rules over a nine-season period. This is from The Athletic that I'm reading now. The Premier League has accused Manchester City of breaking its financial rules following a four-year investigation. The reigning champions have been referred to an independent commission over alleged breaches of a series of financial rules between the 2009-2010 and 2017-2018 seasons. City are accused by the Premier League of not providing accurate financial information, in particular with respect to its revenue, including sponsorship revenue, its related parties and operating costs. So, one of the jokes... That football fans would often make is that City have no fans. Mm. They're not a big club, and yet they have climbed to the top of the revenue stream or the top of the revenue charts. Like they make loads of money, and it's been often it's like an open secret that they are sponsored by themselves. Yeah, yeah. Every company that sponsors them is in somehow related to the Abu Dhabi organization that owns them. Makes sense. Um, it's like Soccer United like being sponsored by SoccerUnited.com. Exactly. It's a bit of. We're putting the Manchester City ourselves here. Oh. The club are also accused of not fully disclosing managerial remuneration for a four-year period uh, related to 2009-2013 when Roberto Mancini was in charge. Italian legend. Italian legend. And uh, you can take the man out of Italian football. Stop. It's not his fault. Um, they also stand accused of breaching Premier League rules on profit and sustainability in 2015-16, 16-17 and 17-18. Premier League has additionally... Oh my God, this is an incredible amount of breaches. The Premier League has additionally alleged the City did not comply with UEFA's regulations around club licensing and financial fair play in 2013-14 and between 2014-15 and 2017-18. City were banned from European competitions for two years by UEFA over alleged breaches of its FFP regulations in February 2020. The sanction was overturned by the Court of Arbitration for Sport in July of the same year, however, because City have these armies and armies of uh, lawyers. lawyers. A Premier League statement announced their affair, announced their affair said the proceedings before the Commission will, in accordance with Premier League Rule W82, be confidential and heard in private under Premier League Rule W82.2. The Commission's final award will be published on the Premier League's website. The co- this confirmation is made in accordance with Premier League <laughs> Rule W82.1. The Premier League will make a no further comment in respect to this matter until further notice. Last season, City won their sixth Premier League title since they were purchased by Abu Dhabi in 2008. They won the title in 2012, 2014, 2018, 2019, and 2021. Uh, they're second at the moment to Arsenal. They just throw that in, just yeah. an extra bit of <laughs> poking. So this is incredible. It's a bit mad. They're talking about potential point deductions. They're talking about potential retrospective point deductions. People are saying, did Same. Jose Mourinho and Solskjaer win the league oh from my Man United? God. What's going on? I don't think that'll happen. I think... It's very the, rare yeah. that you retrospectively change the champion. Completely. You know? So I don't expect that to happen. I think that's more sensationalism on football Twitter. Yeah. But by all accounts, this season they could be in for some breaches. They could be in for some, sorry, uh, sanctions. Mm-hmm. Um, Point seductions, transfer about, limits. Yeah, they're talking about thing. abolishing them from the league. I don't think. Yeah. I don't think 
the Premier League would remove Manchester City. Although it would be funny seeing, it'd be hilarious to see Man City in the fourth division. Yeah, I see how many of their fans stick with them then. Um, I don't know. Like it's 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 shocking, but it's it is a sensational. Like I mean, to be honest, I read that there was over a hundred breaches, so it is like it's kind of like it's not as if you look at Formula One, like Red Bull broke financial fair play as well. Yeah, but this seems to be on like another level. Oh, this is incredible. Oh, there's a lot. They're now covering it live. Um, but that's it. Like I think it's kind of one of those things where. If you let this slide, you've opened the floodgates to Newcastle doing whatever they want to do, Chelsea whatever yeah. they want to do. This is something that's been that's been kind of rumbling on in the background. And I remember when when City were banned from wave competition, and it was like, well, that'll just never make it to that'll just never make it to actual enforcement, you know, because mm. City are going to tie it up. But with lawyers, I presume they're going to do the same here. I also personally have no faith. That the Premier League has any interest. The Premier League don't want to embroil themselves. They're investigating themselves. Themselves, basically. Because if you're investigating a team that's won the title six times since 2008. And you're saying that you've been investigating them for four years. Turns out they were fiddling the books all through that time. Mm. Which allowed them to gain a competitive advantage by spending 50 million on a fullback every transfer window. <laughs> like, that's that doesn't look good on you. And the Premier League is the most kind of like image conscious. Yeah, and they're like, their rights sell for so much. And Man City is now a big part of that. Yeah. They're a big part of the advertising. They're a big part of the draw to the league. You know, early Do they, do they want to they give up broadcasting the Manchester? Do they want to give up an asset? No, they don't. No, I don't think they do. It devalues themselves. Yeah. What, what they might like to do is give City a load of fines. Yeah. They're thinking it's Abu Dhabi. They have loads of money. They have infinite money. Yeah. We'll just give them a big multi-million dollar fine and we get a multi-million that's great yeah don't do it again lads charge them maybe give them a transfer ban for a, for a summer and then back, that's that back to it back to it I don't see them like being removed from the league but the only thing is and this is the other side of it like you could give City a points deduction like if you gave like if you gave Man United or you gave Liverpool or you gave Arsenal a points re- re- deduction They'd be killings. They'd be killings. Whereas City does not a lot of fans. I mean, for who's going to be killings? Yeah. Who's going to be on the streets? Who's going to demonstrate? Nobody. Nobody. That's terrible. The Man City global fan base. Not in Manchester. Aye. Um. So I think we can expect a lot of sensationalist reporting followed by an unsatisfactory resolution. Yeah. Completely. I, that's what I would. I, that's what I would imagine. I mean, a hundred breaches over nine seasons is a lot is a lot that's like systemic that's just yeah that's like, yeah that's not like oh uh, but like a point deduction can't be un can't be underestimated mm. like losing champions league football is a multi-million dollar loss yeah yeah completely and a draw loss as well in terms of players coming to your team and stuff like that but it would it would to be honest the fact that it would kill the title race this season is like a reason for them not to do it not to you know for premier league oh yeah like, yeah yeah There's, if we give them a big point deduction and Give Arsenal a better advantage to potentially win the league. It ruins the excitement of our league. And blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I would say... Whatever happens will be in the future. In the future. Or in... Or they kick the can down the road and they'll maybe never do anything with it. Yeah. In four years, they'll be investigating Chelsea spend in this transfer window. Yeah. Saying the I'm, same thing. Hold on a minute. This doesn't add up. Because I don't think... I also don't believe... Can I just say, the fact that their rules are, we're going to do this all in private and we'll publish the results at the end, yeah. tells us everything about what's going to happen. Yeah, it's not a it's not a uh, fair system. Fair system. It's not an open system. Yeah, no. Um, because the Premier League is not an independent. It's not the FA. Like it's the Premier League is is a club of clubs. Yeah, it's the, a brand. It's a brand. The clubs got together. It's a, it's a Super League. Yeah, they they came out actually and said the Super Super League can't be. Didn't it? There was like a report saying like you can't. La Liga, blah blah blah, Champions League, FIFA. You cannot punish teams for wanting to create. That's right. Something yeah. Else. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like an anti-monopoly thing. Yeah, they said UEFA couldn't abuse their position. If if UEFA punished, say Real Madrid for joining the Super League, that would be an abuse of UEFA's position in the market and would be a, a monopoly against. But yeah, that you'd be essentially UEFA are 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 trapped between a rock and a hard place because. They are insisting that they don't have a monopoly. 
Mm. But if they were to punish somebody for stepping outside it, they would be admitting that they have a monopoly. Yeah. So you you can't. It's hard to enforce a monopoly without getting caught as a monop. You know. Badness. Um, Football's getting mad. It is all getting mad. It is all getting mad. Um, I tell you who's delighted to be out of Manchester City is that Joao Cancelo fella. <laughs> He's decent, isn't he? He's very good. They went. He he started for Bayern Munich uh, yesterday. Right to Wolfsburg, they won four uh, two, and he got uh, two assists. Yeah, he's very good. He's very good. So I just want to give a shout out to him because I couldn't understand why they sold him. Why they sold him? Maybe they needed to. Maybe it would have been one hundred and one fines. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, get Cancelo out of here. Balance the books. Balance the books. I'm not really sure Cancelo. He's not here anymore. He doesn't work here anymore. He's gone. Don't ask any questions. And then. Um, Sir Sir Harold Kane, Harry Kane, Harry Kane, the Hurricane, the Hurricane, the broke, one season wonder, yeah, not quite, broke a big record, fastest yeah. man ever to two hundred Premier League goals, wow, and also Spurs' all time, uh, Spurs' all time leading scorer just ahead of Jimmy Greaves, two hundred sixty seven yeah. goals, and not only was it that record breaking goal, it was the goal to beat Manchester City one nil, yeah. The day before Man, Man City get in, embroiled in this in this in this controversy, huge, great goal, great goal. Uh, great did player. Jimmy Greaves die or is he still alive? I don't have an answer for that. I feel like maybe he died earlier this year, but then I don't know if I have just created that in your brain. Jimmy Greaves. I was gonna say wishful thinking, but I don't wish any harm upon Jimmy Greaves. He might have. He died September nineteenth, twenty twenty one. So okay. it's kind of respectful of Harry Kane to hang on. Jimmy Greaves went to his grave thinking he was number one. Yeah. Now he knew Harry Kane was chasing him. I mean, 2021, maybe it was further out. Maybe he just thought, you know, I mean, that it's a nice way to go out. Way to go out. Thinking you had a Spurs all time record score. I think going out in a bathtub playing with your. Ducks. It's, how, it's how I want to go out. Can I say, though, do you think Harry Kane, now that he's broke that record, yeah. he's the all time leading scorer for, for Spurs, now he can be like, okay, I can leave? I think. He's just committing to the one man club. I think so. I think if he was gonna leave, he should have gone by now. Interesting. Um, because now he's kind of now he's he's old. You know, mm. he is. He's losing a little bit of the the pizzazz, the pizzazz, and he's dropping back, and he's you know, and if in Spur at Spurs, you can be you're Mister Spurs, you're Harry Kane, do whatever yeah, you true. want. We'll build a team around It's like leave you. now, you've sacrificed most of your career to not win a trophy and then you leave and you're also now hated by Spurs fans, low-key. Yeah. Kind of like that, I think. Okay. Congratulations, though. Yeah, congratulations to Harry Kane. He's also, I believe, one goal away from beating Rooney's all-time leading scorer for England record. So, by all accounts, modern-day icon. One of the greatest goal scorers of all time. Which is a bit mad, because it doesn't feel like he was. No. He's we, just been scoring goals the whole we time. We just witnessed his career. Like, when he first started under um, Tim Sherwood. Yeah. It, like... He's making jokes about being called a one season wonder, but there really was that kind of like. Yeah. It was weird seeing him just appear and score goals, and it just felt like that's going to stop. Yeah, he's just, he's having a he's having a run. Yeah, he's having a run here that's great, but that's yeah. not. He's not going to become one of the greatest Premier League strikers of all time in front of our eyes, but he did. But he did. He grew up in front of our eyes. Do you know what's on at the moment? There's the Club World Cup. Oui. Um, which I believe FIFA want to expand into like a 50. Nine team competition or whatever. It's sounds like, sounds great. FIFA only have one idea: expand, expand. They don't have any other ideas on how to make anything better. They just have. No, a, but that's it. They're trying to figure out how to make more money, and they haven't figured it out. They just think if we had more of this, yeah, that's not the way to do it. I don't think so. Um, some great matchups so far in the Club World Cup: Al Ali, uh, who I believe are the Asian. You don't champions. know. I thought they were Egyptian. Are they not Egyptian? Al Ali. Here we go. Let's see if they are. Where are they from? Ooh. Give me the give me the How history. How disaster coming to coming here? Today. They are Egyptian. Great. You had a disaster coming here yeah, today. Yeah, I, I cycled early morning, crisp morning. It's the bank holiday here in Dublin, so it was empty roads. It was great. Yeah, and it's finally spring has sprung. Spring has sprung. So Same it's finally not. It's, past. it's not. It's finally not freezing. In, in this country and I, I thought I'd go for a cycle and my wheel went flat terrible awful Cause it, it actually wasn't that awful because at that point my legs were a bit tired so I was like this is actually great mm. but now to get home I'm like oh I have this bike nothing worse than walking with a bike nothing it's not what the bike was designed for it's the opposite yeah it's a pity you didn't you, know, you won't have me with me I could have put it on my <laughs> shoulders <laughs> saddle you up yeah 
I could have been on your on your, on your shoulders. <laughs> you on your shoulders, <laughs> carrying the bike here. Um, Shopping so, for water. <laughs> Uh, Alali beat Auckland City from New Zealand a 3 uh, nil. Then what? on penalties, Al Hilal beat uh, Wydad Casablanca, and then uh, Alali beat Seattle Sounders of the MLS. Um, Seattle Sounders. Our Egyptian listeners get one over on our American listeners there. Uh, and then tomorrow we have Flamengo, the Flamengo. South American champions, uh, playing Al Hilal, and then we have. Uh, Al Ali playing Real Madrid. So Real Madrid and Flamengo were seeded in this yes, situation. Yes, okay. that's right. And then we'll have uh, that's their semi-finals, and then we'll have a, a final and a third place playoff. Great, very exciting. I wonder where it's going. Where is it going to be hosted? Let me have a look at that. That would that be year or something? Uh, the Grand Stade de Tangier in Mar- in Tangier, Morocco. That's exciting. Oh, Morocco, who? Had a great World Cup. Had a great World Cup and, and had bid previously for the World Cup. Yeah, they're hosting something. Oh, the Club World Cup, is that it? This is it. This is it now. This is what they're hosting. Um, so there we go. Last time, last year, I think it was Chelsea and Palmeiras in the last one. And like it was in Saudi or Dubai Chelsea or something. Chelsea didn't they? Or did they? Did they? I don't know. But there was like uh, thousands of Palmeiras fans. The Brazilians love the Club World Cup. Mm. Um, so... So we're hoping we have a Flamengo Real Madrid final. Hoping so. Um. Anyway, that's all I had for this week. Yeah, Milan lost the derby. It was real sad. Yeah. We're in a crazy bad run of form. I know. That's what I want to get what into. Are you? Are you? Are you Pioli in? Pioli out? I'm a Pioli's grand. I, I think. I think. I think. Like, he's grand. I think. And um, there's a lot of internal issues in the club at the minute with players. Right. That's what I'm hearing. What? Where's Mike Banya? Is he injured? He is. Yeah. He's been injured for a long time. Yeah, I don't understand how Kaylor Navas went to Nottingham Forest when we're crying out for a goalkeeper yeah. and we're AC Milan. I suppose Nottingham Forest are European champions as well. They have the money. Former. Shocking. Shocking. Kept a clean sheet on his debut. Sean Dyche is back. Sean Dyche is back. He, With a bang. And he, and he Sean Dyche uh, oh. Arsenal. No Dude. problem. Not a problem. What are you leaving him on the sidelines for? He was there the whole time. He was waiting. He comes in and he actually, I actually like, he suits everything for me. Oh, yeah. You know? Proper club. Proper club, proper manager, bit of Brexit football. Everything never been relegated. Is that right? I believe so. Wow. And then if Sean Dyche is back in, you'd like to think that's going to stay that way. Yeah. Never been, maybe from the Premier League. No, I think from the England. From ever, from top flight. I think so. Wow. I might be wrong. I might... I might Google. I don't want the Evertonians because there is a few. There are a few Evertonians. That say yeah. actually. Well, no, they, they probably wouldn't say that. They wouldn't say actually we were relegated. They might. They might be sick in the head like that. They might. They might. Well, yeah, we were relegated when we were under the ownership of this. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, whoa. Two occasions they have been. Yeah. My apologies. Tell us when. Sorry, Evertonians. Uh, it's only relegated. Let me read this. Top flight. Everything has been relegated from the English top flight on two occasions and have never played in a league lower than the second division, okay, in the club's history, since the club's inception in 1887. Incredible. Its only relegations came in the 1929-30 season and the 1950-51 season. So my apologies. I don't know why I thought they'd never been relegated. Obviously the Premier League. Premier League. But um, that always gets confused. And why does, why do they kind of delete everything pre-Premier League? If it was the same league. It was, it, was a, it was a big thing at the time. It was like the Super League. The Premier League. They broke away from the first division um, against the wishes of everyone else. Okay. Um, and then they just said, Phew. and Sky, I think Sky liked to cover everything they had rights to. Fair. It's um, very confusing. It is confusing. But Sean Dyche, anyway, great to have him back in, back oh, in, in football. football. Um, a character. Yeah. And uh, the, I think it's a, for, for any great team, you have to get beaten one 0 by Sean Dyche, so Arsenal should consider it a uh, right of passage. Yeah, makes sense. Um, they can, they can go, they can kick on and win the title from here. It's no, there's no shame in it. No shame in being Sean Dyche. Yeah. Now I did hear that they ran. Oh, that Tarkovsky was the goal scorer. Yeah, it was a Tarkovsky former Burn, Bernie Michael Kane former Bernie. Uh, uh, does Dwight McNeil play for Everton now? Maybe. I think so. I can't remember. Anyway, oh, Anthony Gordon went to Newcastle for forty million pounds. That I was mad. Don't, don't. That's a great deal for Everton. 
Don't buy his Don't cards. buy Anthony Gordon cards, okay? People just don't. <laughs> and on that note... We out. We out. See you on Thursday. <laughs>